the thing that you can say it's very hard to adjudicate because the content specifics are very how do you say uh, making it so that this motion can be good in one place but bad in the other place or something like this, right? So you want to try to present to a judge that this is something that's very like how can you adjudicate? And even if you say there's a bit a bit more, you still have a lot of how do you say bad stuff on your side or in developing world, developed world or something like that. So you can say that mechanism coming from both top hat are how do you say contingent on context and the, the given that context that is virtually impossible for them to bring in like 40 minutes and we're also prep or something like this, we are going to bring you some of these things or we are going to talk about something that is not content specific, that is irrespective of whether we're talking about why these are, 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 are things here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, this is very important for uh, extensions because usually their time management is um, probably the worst in the debate because they have a lot of things to do, they have to respond to what happened in the opening and they have to introduce their extension. So if you do these two things, the first one being do not rebut your diagonal but frame it as there's a clash uh, and then we are comparing ourselves to our opening but also rebutting our, uh, our diagonal doing the first thing and secondly out framing the stuff, you're saving a lot of time in rebuttal, right? And then your group doesn't, as is almost always the case, have to save you and win the debate because the extension speaker simply fucks up, right? God is great. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I, I need to save my laptop. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, uh, one of the ways is to just try to think about and try to think of the extensions that are true for something irrespective of the context. Or if you cannot do this, just to try to, uh, how do you say, mitigate the bad cases and bring out why the most relevant cases are uh, these, these good ones. And this is usually what's missed on your top hat. So this might be perceived if you don't say it. So, so the issue is you will do this naturally, but without flagging this to a judge before you do it, it sounds very much like you're just doing, oh, we're going to talk about the developing world. Five, you don't have it. You might get a second or something. If you just do it, because you usually do that, that that type of extension, without framing out and saying, like, "Look, this is what top half that, and this is why it's heavily based on context." We're going to talk about the most relevant part, and this is this. Without this sentence, your your extension sounds way less powerful or something. So that's maybe more crucial than delivering the extension itself is to try to frame it uh, before you do it in that manner. So that's one. And an important. Uh, piece of advice here is do not be afraid to do this during the round. So oftentimes people are afraid uh, if they come up with a single extension in, in prep time and then this extension needs to be changed and stuff like this. But oftentimes uh, the inspiration for this or the, the lacks of like uh, the lacks of analysis and stuff that was Milos was talking about in the opening table can inspire you to do an extension. So do not be afraid to come up with extension during speeches. It works very well when opening teams actually present you where they lack in terms of analysis and why they mischaracterize the paper and are not like relevant in terms of Mac or in terms of input and stuff like this. This is something this is something that you guys can do. This is something that the beginners or intermediate people cannot do because there's gonna be like miscommunication shit, like the, the team is not going to have coherence. But we're gonna talk a little bit about communication in between teams, but this is something that the best teams can do. And it actually works very well if you try to do this uh, well. So this might be called like a geographical framing. In terms of you're trying to present that either uh, their case is geographically problematic or that your geographical pick is the best thing or that you're going to present something that is different. So that's one. Second type is time, time frame or something like this. Not necessarily all we're going to position this in nine, no. But like in terms of whether this mechanism is sustainable in a long run. So this is where you can pick out that your opening theme might be true in 2019, but if we, something else changes, this is pretty dangerous. This is a very good, like, you two debated against, against me on that motion, which is like a political, like, you touch, which is political activism. The good way to bring a lot of this stuff about, oh, uh, progressive policies are going to continue or something like this, is to challenge whether we can actually prove that some of these things, uh, how do you say, will uh, continue to go in the progressive direction, continue to go in the, how do you say, uh, rise of the right wing direction or something like that. So for example, if somebody runs the rise of the right wing case today, or something the rise of populism, the correct <coughs> answer is it's way more toned up. So this argument worked better three years ago when the migrant crisis was in heat of the moment, 
but currently the other like the, the first of all there is less migrants coming in so people do not care as much but second of all people are more used to it and it has become old news so you can outfring a lot of these arguments how they are not as relevant in the current time frame secondly you can outfring that there is impossibility to prove why the thing will continue along this path of progressiveness, along this path of, I don't know, whatever, which means that in that, that how do you say, uh, that your extension is going to be irrespective of this, something is based on something that will not change ever, I don't know, human nature, uh, how do you say, sociology, or some of these things that are not based on technology, context, wars happening, or something else that are going to be true. So that's very cool and very crucial because that points out the flaw in your opening things and saying like, look, they are good and they're fine, but they're good for now. But the problem is that the, the rapid changes in like, like uh, the discourse, polarization, you can point out to a lot of these things, like you the, you usually know, the, usually the two, two examples that I give is Brexit and Trump. People couldn't predict that these are the things that would have happened. Also, people couldn't predict the migrant crisis itself, right? People didn't believe that it's going to be so huge. So uh, we cannot necessarily predict what will tomorrow bring in, the, in this sort of metric, which means that if your mechanism is just based on the context, it means that it's much more vulnerable for you from bottom half uh, from yeah, bottom half, yeah. Bottom half being like, look, this is why it's less relevant, which doesn't mean that you won automatically. It just means that you can portray to a judge why this is less relevant than something that is as universal as your case. So this is what, where you go to. Obviously, you can do a reversal, right? If somebody goes very broad or something like this, you can do a time analysis, which is to say, like, look, in 2019, these are the true facts currently. This is what is uh, what is making this argument, how you say, uh, relevant today or something like that. So that's the context. I don't know uh, whether it's something in geopolitics that you know, whether in the economy, whether social media or something like that, whether the changes in like people's opinions and behaviors or something like that. So some of these things can be very relevant in terms of saying like what well, opening tables were very broad and very like unspecific. We're gonna tell you why specifically now this is problematic or this is good or something like that. So that's a very like time set is a not time set, but time frame sometimes can be a very good, good thing. Do you have something there or something? <laughs> Thirdly. And this is uh, this is this like uh, higher, lower impact in this sort of situation. Uh, usually, it's uh, very good to try to relativize the impacts that came before you, even for your own side. Obviously, unless your case is taking on it, which is to say, uh, people like uh, if the debate so far was very like uh, uh, overly enthusiastic about the impacts, when closing team just come and say, like, look, let's do a reality check. And this, this is also a buzzword that usually people want. Let's do a reality check. This is how this plays out in real life. And this is how people will do. And that's usually flagging that you're going to have a nuanced analysis, which is not going to be really an extension, but it's going to be a nuanced analysis of different actors or something like that. But if you do a nuanced analysis of actors without <laughs> telling to me why this is important, you're going to lose, you're going to say, this is a bit derivative. But if you say, look, uh, uh, how do you say, they over-impacted their stuff without ever delving into how do people interact with themselves or something like this, or amongst each other. I, we are going to provide you this, and hence we're going to provide the nuance in this, and we're going to prove lower impacts possibly, but something that is more proven, then you signal to a judge, uh, first of all, that, that their stuff is not proven, and they're going to be more obliged to look into that, is this really proven or something like this, but second of all, it's bringing your analysis extension, which would otherwise be considered as very derivative, or something that might be very important and very crucial, like we're bringing nuance, we're bringing crime, no, we're bringing nuance, uh, nuance in this debate. Yeah. Uh, I think it's important here to, uh, to think about are, are we going to use these types of extension when uh, related to how other things in the debate look to you. So if you feel like that the biggest threat in the debate is your opening and they've done a lot of stuff and the only way for you to do it, do something is, is, is if you extend them, otherwise you're going to be forced, then it might be wise to do this if it's a missing link. But in other cases where your opening was weak, 
you don't need to spend as much time analyzing some of the stuff they've proven because presumably you have other arguments where with less analysis but maybe more impact than stuff like this, you can engage better with opening or with the opposition teams or like the other the other. But sometimes people and this is this is where like advanced intermediate clash. If it's a bit of a shallow motion or something like this. I don't have to be in the time frame. You fucked it up by, by pointing out that I fucked up. Okay. Uh, this is a uh, coffee with Milos and Lotto. Uh, hi. Uh, so, uh, uh, oh, I lost my thought because of you. Fuck you. Shallow uh, motion. Shallow motion. Shallow motion. Uh, usually, the problem, the problem with. Uh, with it, and if you get into it, if you get into a very good room, and it's a shallow motion, you lose. Fuck. Sorry. Uh, but if you get into an intermediate room, people are usually not. Uh, people are usually very afraid because, like, people just tag something and just deliver it very poorly, and then you have to follow up on that or something like this. Uh, this is what usually happens in rounds one. So you're round one, and you don't get a completely incompetent opening team, and you're a closing team. Or something like that. Well, what do you do? How, how do you position yourself? Or, what? or something like that. First of all, what? what do you mean by shallow motion? Yeah, I don't shallow, know. there is not many arguments for, for GOV or for OP. There is two or three maximum, so there is no extension uh, feasible to be delivered in that motion. There is loads of motions that are shallow. Uh, some of them were set here. No, no. <laughs> yes, but, uh, some of them uh, will be. Some of them will be. <laughs> See here. Uh, no, uh, like, uh, fine. Um, so uh, the issue is people are usually very much afraid, oh, somebody said some of the stuff. For example, in the first motion, uh, somebody said, uh, how do you say, uh, this incentivizes, uh, incentivizes parents to take care of their children or something like that. Fine. Uh, but what you can do and what you can, how do you say, uh, analyze more is like, uh, you can make an extension out of that. You just have to be very careful. This is where this framing comes into play. So you can say, and this is this uh, broad versus the versus the the, the narrow uh, the, the narrow how do you say framing, which is to say, uh, opening team has brought you the analysis that is very general that can work with any motion that is similar towards this. We're gonna bring you why specifically this motion and this policy is gonna have an influence. And you can have the same impact, you have the same arguments, but run through the prism of why specifically this motion is necessary other than any other educational policy that can incentivize parents, any other thing that you can do to parents to do so. Why money is crucial or something like that. So some of these types of analysis can be very valuable, even if somebody does the analysis that is pretty decent, that is gonna be like, yeah, this is what is gonna incentivize parents or something like that. Just by calling them out and being like, look, our opening team was not very specific, okay? Was not very specific in proving to you why this particular motion is gonna to lead to these impacts, even though they have these types of stuff. We're gonna tell you why this is the only or the crucial thing in how do you say making this mechanism happen or something like that. So this is like uh, narrowing uh, narrowing the debate down to the specific topic in question because that's the largest problem of the intermediate, not intermediate, I think like lower rooms of debating is that they will get the, not the beginner, they will get what the arguments are, they will not tie it why specifically to the motion this is true or something like this. So this is uh, what, what Israelis do very well in terms of like uh, this analysis specific extension or something like that. And I think it can be a very good extension, it just needs to be flagged uh, particularly from the get-go, from the extension speech, like look, this is uh, how they say. This is what we're gonna. This is what we're gonna do. This is what opening team has lacked, and this is this uh, uh, specificity about the the motion or something like this. So even if this can be part of specific the motion, they didn't do this analysis, and we are gonna do this, and this is why we're gonna win, right? So I don't know, if we talk about the first motion uh, from yesterday from the practice rounds, uh, and if opening does the job fairly well, so they run all of the like classic arguments, first principles, blah blah. Then you're from closing can ask the question: Why is our case? Why does our case better answer 
let's say, the dilemma between giving this to people who have high grades or to people who are going to enroll their kids into high school, if high school is not mandatory. Right? So on one hand, you can have a policy where you're going to give out additional government payments if, kids, uh, if parents enroll their kids to high school, and you are right now propping the idea of if they have better grades in high school, we're going to give them more money, right? So this is how you become really motion specific and talk about this is how we achieve more benefits, blah, blah, Of course, you don't have to mention the motion, right? You have to think through the prism and this is how you can win uh, over... Why this is the only yeah. policy that can solve the thing or something like this? Or the best, yeah. Solve. How to avoid stabbing <laughs> uh, if you have to stab? Usually... Uh, Usually, if somebody does something outrageous that you need to stab, usually the other side calls them out. Like they, it's in, not in the interest of God to, to leave it hanging, and it's usually on their side to uh, to to how to say. Uh, for example, like imagine imagine there is an intervention, there is an intervention debate, and then uh, your opening team uh, props a horrible intervention, like boots on the ground, horrific stuff, and then opening opening team is like, ha ha, yes, we are going to win this. So, so heavily or something like this, and then they start talking about why this intervention is, is, uh, is particularly bad. Yeah. Why this intervention is particularly bad. So, if somebody is a nice person and can say, like, this is unfeasible, this is like a bad prop, sorry, uh, and then the opening opposition debate is a normal debate, that's fine. But you can by inserting two small magical words, try to avoid and to avoid being perceived as stabbing. This is even if this is true, that opening table said, we're going to win the best case scenario for op and win the, win the best case scenario in this sort of situation. Uh, so which this is like, uh, even if uh, the opposition is true that they squirreled, uh, even if the opposition is true that uh, this is not the, the charitable reading of the motion, but whilst we agree with our opening team, uh, we are gonna we are gonna present to you how they say the, the realistic thing, and then you go with your case or something like this. Also, like in this sort of situation, it's all it's, if it's really stupid, it's always good to backstab as much as you can. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't mean like explicitly, <laughs> but to. So look at how the debate un unrolls, look at the audience, look at the judges, look at the opposition teams, and if you have the perception that they think their model is crazy, that means they're going to give you more slack if you are more explicit with your backstab. So if you feel like their model is crazy, and if others feel their model is crazy, you can be more lax in how you do this. If you feel like that that's not the case, then try to like be very careful and like twist your words and do the even ifs and a lot of this and like they were right but here's why this is more likely and stuff like so this. a good example for me that didn't pass in the end but i think it should have fuck the judge no <laughs> uh, uh, so for example uh, there was a motion in the warsaw that i yeah I said, uh, it was about wagner it was should the israeli orchestra uh, play wagner uh, play that yeah, they shouldn't play wagner Wagner was like pro-Nazi. That's that's that was the reasoning. So uh, the the gov side was for them that they should play or something like this. And the best prop there is to talk about commemorative function. Uh, you're gonna talk about like uh, Nazi things because like one of the one of the reasons on the other slide was also that these Wagner's was allegedly played during the Holocaust like in the Auschwitz and stuff like that. You can I think the best way to prop is just to be like look we are gonna. Uh, this is going to be a commemorative concerts and stuff like that. We're going to play uh, the Holocaust victims. We're going to tell uh, that this was a horror. It's going to be painted in a in a way that uh, like you would paint a horror music, right? Where this is gonna, this was played during the time of oppression. So my OG comes out and says, uh, music is value neutral. Music has no meaning, and we are just caring about the beauty of music. This cannot win the debate, literally. That, like, if you prep it as that, the only thing standing in the debate is backlash from op, and the op wins always in this sort of situation. What we wanted to do, and this is this is the step that is not a step, uh, is to say, even if opening government is true, and we agree that music is like uh, objectively value neutral and is detached, we believe that. People give value themselves to that music, values and stuff like that, which means that even if music should be value neutral, people perceive it as not being value neutral. 
So here's how this is going to be perceived and then my case about commemoration and stuff like that, right? So this is the only way for me to even try to, to do something because like, if it's just about objectivity of music, there's one argument there and it's stupid and I'm losing the debate. In the end, I did get the fourth in this very situation, but like, it was a very controversial, it was a split, it was controversial, should, should we got the fourth or something, I'm, I'm not doing, doing it perfectly, but this is the only way for you to do it. So you agree to an extent and try to find a logical, how do you say, conundrum, how do you get out of it? And this is usually done by, like, as I said, buzzwords, like even if they are right, Ah. <laughs> uh, even if uh, blah blah, so this is very very cool. How do you say thing that that will how do you say? It's a magical word that will open up judge towards being more lenient towards how do you say charitable reading of you stabbing somebody. We believe like. Good judges will not care about stabbing. That's that's what I learned the hard way. So like if you if you're in a good room, really stabbing stabbing doesn't have as much as much impact. Like literally, uh, almost no judge will give the call just based on stabbing. They will try to figure out other ways why you get the fourth or something like this. But they will try to figure out the other way why you get the fourth and to explain it. They will try very hard. Don't give them this. Uh, try to uh, try to be uh, more better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, one second. Where's my water? Water. EPL. He's gonna explain the EPL extension now. Yes. If you have the EPL extension, mm. you cannot do an EPL extension. But they, uh, while we're there, uh, I mean, I know this is a cozy cap strategy, but you can do it uh, for people who go to Europe, especially. It's very crucial. But it's uh, also relevant if one of the teams is closing mm. and you're closing as yes. well. So oh yeah, you're close. Yeah, yeah. So that's, oh, that's yeah. Also good. Good friend. Good wood. <laughs> good boy. Uh, so uh, how do you say? Uh, uh, if somebody is doing an EPL extension, EPL extension is what we call uh, native speakers repeating uh, ESL speakers before them and uh, just doing it more beautifully, but not adding much value. This happened to me numerous times, but. Uh, I only got fucked by it once in the end because like you have to know how to deal with it. In terms of if they do it, it's fucked for them, but there needs to be a judge who notices that it's fucked for them and that they don't have an extension. The way to try to signal is to try to guilt trip a judge. Two ways. First of all, the ESL, <laughs> ESL bias has become very, uh, like, uh, like, it's very serious. I mean, as a DCA of yours, we will take it very, very seriously when somebody says this person is an ESL biased person, right? So this is, a, first of all, on feedback, people have the incentive not to be so, or at least not to openly be so, uh, because they will be fucked in feedback. They might not break. Some people didn't break in Novi Sad because of that, and this will definitely happen in Athens. Uh, so we hate ESL bias. So that's the first incentive. So uh, the way to, how do you say, do it is to... Uh, if your opening team to question the, your closing team, for example, opening up, you question closing government and just say, look, this is what we said. Closing team, our closing team is just repeating us with nicer words. Or just because we are ESL doesn't mean we didn't add value or something like that. Some of these pathetic sounding sentences, they're gonna make, make it, first of all, guilt trip towards the judge. So they will, uh, Emotionally, you will force them to be more more lenient towards you. But secondly, how do you say? Uh, they have to at that point take it more seriously. They have to really look at it because if you call it out and then they just ignore that, uh, they might run a risk of first of all some, one of the wings being like, "Aha! But they said this. You ESL bias chair, fuck you. <laughs> I'm gonna write the bad feedback on you." So, they, so they have the risks of not looking into it. So at least they will look into it more than they would do otherwise, uh, if you believe. So, so just do that. But secondly, if you see somebody else the, the, doing that to other ESL team, first of all, stick together to your ESL brothers and sisters. But uh, second of all, uh, it's a very good thing for you because like, you can not discount the other team, but you can make the other team sound worse by being like, uh, at your CG, their CO or whatever, you as a whip, just come out. Closing opposition, literally, not literally, but like you have to explain it a bit more and be like, well, 
Opening thing has brought to you all of these thing, things. I think the closing thing didn't have much value rather than pretty English or something like this. So some of these words can also be done from CG towards. Uh, obviously, you can also do it from OG or something. So everybody has the incentive in that room to bash the team who was EPL, who did the EPL extension. You just be very uh, wary, and like the best position to do it from is actually when you're when you're extension. And when you're whipping or whatever, because you have time to explain more to a judge. Like you have 15 seconds in a POI, but here you can spend like 30 seconds explaining like this is the same, this is the same, this is the same. This is cool because this probably means that they're fourth or they're at least uh, way worse. So it's a valuable thing to do from whip on the other side to try to call out them being uh, derivative or repetitive, uh, even if they're not that so. But but again. Be charitable. Don't do it if it's really not true. If it's obvious, like this is a boy who cried wolf, you're not gonna be listened to, right? If, if you just bash your oh, EPL extension, etc., and they really did a good job and you were horrible, then uh, fuck you. I mean, you were horrible. So so don't uh, uh, like do it if people are really doing it to you. But be sure they will do it to you, especially Irish teams. Uh, Irish teams are very famous. Like every time I get an Irish team behind me, they do they try to do it to me. Uh, so that's. And there's one more thing here, but this one I'm not sure how often it is used, but it can be useful. So if you're in hell and you don't know if you're going to be fourth or fourth in a debate, and this happens to you from the other side, that they had an EPL extension, there you can strategically then choose maybe to validate that EPL extension. Insofar as, as you give less credit to the opening team, you give more credit to the closing team, and then if you win over the closing team, that means you probably get a second if that strategy passes. But if the judge buys the EPL extension, if the judge doesn't buy the EPL extension, you're still presumably first, not fourth. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a strategic gamble. Depending on the situation, you can also reverse this. I mean, like it, it's competitive, sucks, ESL bias happens. But you're probably going to be ESL biased in the same debate. Yeah, if that happens in terms of strong meaning, also ESL. the fact that somebody is a is a, is a judge, if your judge is ESL, doesn't mean that they won't be ESL biased. Usually, it's quite the opposite. ESL uh, people are more discriminatory towards their own, which is horrible. Uh, the the thing is, uh, it's it's just about awareness and paying attention. Because if if you don't pay attention, obviously it sounds more persuasive if someone is doing it on an English. You're used to listening to when someone explains you like smart shit and stuff like this. Yeah. So sometimes EPL people pay more attention because they are afraid that they are going to be called out as ESL bias versus ESL people have this idea that they cannot be called ESL bias because they are ESL. <laughs> so also, also, if something does an EPL extension on you, uh, take note. Uh, because uh, you can use some of these words in the next debate, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, really, like, like uh, getting more, be, becoming more EPL is good. Like, even though it's uh, it's horrible, we should value uh, our own uh, accents and stuff like that. By uh, how do you say, expanding your vocabulary uh, by the uh, words that they use that are similar. Oh, interesting. Uh, I can use this word next time I'm opening or something like this, or do an EPL extension myself. But don't do it. Uh, but uh, but yeah, in that in that manner. So let's move on. Uh, what I want to do now, uh, we're near the half point, so, so what I want to do now is to uh, talk about communication, uh, writing, and stuff like that. A couple of things. First of all, every team, in the end, needs to have a person. This is why teams that have very clashing personalities are very difficult to, how do you say, uh, to, to work uh, together. So every team, in the end, has to have a person will make the final call if there is a fight in the team. That's sadly true, and that's sadly going to be, going to be the case. Usually that, that person is the extension speaker, but that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't mean that it cannot work otherwise. Uh, uh, but, so a couple of things. If somebody does it and he fucks up, uh, the other person, uh, it's fucked up. You are also, Play because you didn't explain your extension properly to the person and you didn't agree on that metric. So you both blame, you both fucked up in this situation. The fact that somebody made the decision in the end, you're both guilty, fuck you both. <laughs> but uh, no, <laughs> you're nice people. Uh, but uh, but uh, 
you, but the, for, the fact of the matter is the worst thing that you can do, and that's, that's actually, Euros is the worst time. Uh, because like it's very stressful, uh, you are, how do you say, uh, fifth round, you get a fourth, or something like this. Uh, it happened to me, like, you, you blame your partner, you're like, could have been better or something. It creates horrific situations where you just tilt yourself to death, you cannot work the next round, you, you, then you become stubborn and you don't want to listen or something like this. So just uh, the fact that somebody fucked up, uh, that means that you also fucked up because you didn't uh, explain it properly, you didn't help enough, you didn't communicate well enough. So the fact that somebody didn't deliver an extension and then you did it in whip, fuck you, 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 you were fucked because you didn't check your partner or something like that. But how do you check your partner? What did you do? Uh, except me fucking you now. <laughs> fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> but like, uh, if, what, what, what do you do? Firstly, writing. We, like, uh, like uh, you four know this, like, and we're gonna drill you even more. But like, Writing on pieces of paper is not just for you to read during the speech. I would argue that it's less for you to do during the speech because you will not read from the paper or something like this. The paper that you write is there for you to communicate with your partner properly what are you going to run. Why? Because you cannot whisper during the round effectively. That's virtually impossible uh, because you will be shushed. Second of all, even if you do whisper, it's very difficult, how do you say, uh, to whisper the whole fucking case because it's literally seven minutes uh, that you would do. So you, you, uh, the problematic things that usually happen in the case are usually uh, disagreements of what needs to be proven, what needs to be more analyzed, what needs to be done in extension or something like this. And the way to communicate that is to start writing the speech and write the speech as the way you want to deliver and leave some blank spaces so when you add, uh, leave some blank spaces and then what you do is give it to your partner and this is why it's very important to be uh, very organized orderly and stuff like that and this is why you practice orderliness it's not i know people can deal with their own creative mess and something like this but the other people can't or something like that so the benefit of you being more orderly is you give your paper to your partner he reads it and then you can comment. You can also comment just based on uh, pointing to the stuff. So I am unsure what this means. So I, I underline you or yeah, I write the, the, how do you say, the question mark or whatever. Or I, then you can, uh, uh, then you can whisper because you know what specifically you're whispering about. Uh -huh. So point this thing, add blah, blah. And then you can say, huh, yes, I will add that or something. So it's very much easier to discuss when you know what's the structure of the argument and then you can pinpoint, oh, this is the problem or that's the problem or something like this. So it's very crucial. Like that's, as I said, that's the, I'm understating how important this is or something like this in order for you to understand, in order for you to do a proper whip or something like this. When do you start doing this? And again, uh, you do not start writing your extension before the extension. You start writing your extension as soon as humanly possible. What does it mean? As soon as Prime Minister has done his speech, you write your extension uh, for, for Gov. As soon as the leader of the opposition has done their speech, you do your extension for this. The vast majority of the debates will not backload because that's the idiotic thing to do. Only way to do the, where this doesn't happen if the Prime Minister is so horrible, but then you're in such a bad room that you will win anyway, whatever you do in a certain situation, right? So usually if you want to win from top half, you also need to have two proper speeches. If done correctly, second speech will have zero new arguments, DPM, DLO, they will have just framing, rebuttal, and, and doing the this stuff. This is also a strategy for top half. No backloading, that's stupid. Uh, uh, because you don't have to get to hear a response to your case. So uh, what you do is start writing fast, as fast as humanly possible uh, in the beginning. In this sort of situation. Sometimes, uh, if you have a very interesting, curious case that you want to run and you're confident that they're not going to run it, you can write it all, all, almost already from the beginning of the debate or a few sentences of, of Prime Minister. I sometimes, and, and you get used to it, you can, after a couple of sentences of Prime Minister, you can get what he's going to say. Whether they're going to stumble, what they're going to do, who cool, they're not going to run the thing, then you start writing immediately. The benefit of that is that, first of all, 
uh, afterwards you are free to for your mind to first of all uh, do more in detail about what you want to analyze and stuff like that second of all you have more time to agree oh is this an extension what do we do next what do we frame and stuff like that but you also give more time to the whip to then everything that whip hears in the debate needs to be compared to this if the if uh, he has to come up with these answers when you're doing your speech you have one speech to do it and that's horrible. So WIP should start thinking about how to prioritize the debate from the get-go. From the beginning of, of the when the extension is written, you should start like so for example prep time. Yeah, yeah. So so this is what I said in the prep time at the beginning. The one of the more important things for for, for the closing half is to start thinking about how do we frame one case against another or something else. Because this is the most difficult thing. This is the thing that requires the most intellectual power. Because that's that that's hard. Like proving an argument at this point, you know how to prove an argument. You did it, you've done this, or something. You can do it alone or something else. But like framing requires intelligence, requires talking, requires like a a lot of this stuff. So, yeah. uh, I would just add to this when we talk about communication and like this synergy between the team, it's very important that you uh, act as a team in regard to uh, the lack of attention you are going to have depending on uh, oh, yeah. what time it is to your speech and stuff like this. <coughs> so, if you're speaking from member government, you're going to have a huge lack of attention to the deputy leader of the opposition. That's something that's natural, that's something where you focus on your speech and you're kind of like listening with one ear, but also writing your speech and preparing for your speech. You don't want to fuck up the speech and you're going to pay less attention than, for example, to the leader. Then you as a whip, you have to recognize this and you have to be ready to fo focus more rebuttal on what the DLO is going to say than on what the LO is going to say because you presume you know that this is something that's not going to cover, be covered by your extension. The same is reversed then when you, for example, as government whip, are going to respond to, uh, to the extension. Now, of course, this is a little bit different because you as government whip only have one chance as closing government to respond to the closing opposition's extension. But still, during that speech, your extension should be working really hard to also engage with, their, with the member of the opposition, right? So it goes like this. You, you help kind of defeating DLO if you're closing government, but your member helps you defeat a uh, member of the opposition in this sort of uh, situation. This is something really important, this is something that, that is not an unusual situation yeah. when something extraordinary happens. This should be the normal in 90% of debates that you, you cover up each other because of the lack of attention that's going to happen. The best possible, that the, actually the best possible partnership and synergies is where the extension speaker does some rebuttal so in order to not be completely not responsive, but not enough, nearly enough to, to defeat the, the case completely. And then uh, he delivers the extension to the fullest, four or five minutes of extension. And then the whip then does all of the other rebuttals and all of the other stuff. So sometimes it's very fine uh, to, to be like, uh, like when we were up against you in that debate, uh, like Yanko, I told to Yanko, please just listen to opening government and say, I know our extension, I'm just going to write it, I'm going to do it. And then I didn't respond that much to opening government because our case also outframes them, outframes them in a certain way. But then he, in his whip, just responded and just been like, here's, I'm going to piss on everybody in the search chain. So just the, the vision of labor is sometimes very good. And this is where the trust, trust in your partner is very important. Especially if you're an extension speaker. If you're an extension speaker and you do not trust that your uh, speaker is going to, how to say, want to do, like when I was debating with, with Johan, <laughs> hi Johan, the issue is then you try to do everything. And uh, if you're not as good as I am, <laughs> no, if you're not, if you're not that good, then <laughs> if, if, you're, if you're not, if you're not that good, this means that you probably do none of it good. Which means that you try to do uh, all of the rebuttal and then all of the extension and stuff like that, and then you uh, just by lack of time, with seven minutes trying to defeat the uh, yeah, you you lose in the end or something. Some over rebuttal. Yeah, you you can't. Like you have three minutes to do rebuttal, you have four minutes to deliver an extension. Usually, you don't have time to. You cannot uh, virtually from member of the opposition, even though it's my favorite speech, you cannot uh, do everything in that unless they're very bad. 
Like if they're very bad, you can do it. But if you're in a top room or something like this, you cannot respond to all of the case of the opening government, all of the case of the closing government, and then you deliver the extension. It's going to be very rarely done, and this is when you need two people to win a debate or something like this. But like clear division and like clearly communicating. Look, uh, please listen to this speech. I'm going to write my extension now. It's very crucial. And just flagging this. I'm going to do this, you do this. And just, just dividing it and being honest with what you can do and what you cannot do is a very crucial and important thing to do. What does the whip do when you give him this paper? First of all, the whip tries to find like, plot holes, like the holes in the speech try, tries to figure out whether some analysis is necessary, what was analyzed or something, so that's when you agree, or you agree this is bad, bad just drop it, <laughs> throw that piece of trash, <laughs> or something that's not bad. Like, usually you just write, but like then you take that opportunity to write on your piece of paper, uh, how do you say, simpler version of the same argument, so you have it. Why? First of all, then when you're following your partner while he's delivering a speech, it's very easy for you to see, ah, so, so he didn't, so, because usually sometimes it happens that I have a piece of paper and I don't deliver everything on that piece of paper, it's fucked. So usually it's very easier for me if I'm good, then to track what he did and then to add my stuff. But then secondly, because, uh, and this is why usually partnerships that have completely different political views and different stuff are very bad, very good, uh, just by you trying then, by your own way to analyze that argument will lead you to a great web speech, right? Uh, because uh, two people do not have the same way to analyze stuff, right? And it's usually going to be a different analogy or different reason or something like this. Just by the virtue of you, of you, how do you say, taking a glance and then thinking of yourself, how would I prove this argument? How would I do it if I was extension or something like this? And then writing that down and trying to, uh, how do you say, would mean, uh, how do you say, uh, deepening the analysis of your, of, of your extension speaker. So then you're, well, because that's a lot, you're allowed to deepen the analysis. You just don't say it's deepen, uh, deepening the analysis, you just say, okay, so a couple of more points or something like this, right? So uh, just the outline of the argument, and then you start writing it as well as if you were to, to do it. The other thing in web is, uh, I mean, I know that some people don't do it, but like, just uh, to emphasize, do not do clashes. That's the worst thing in the world. Like, I, my, my hair rises uh, like, like if somebody does clashes. People do not know how to do clashes. Like, even the best whips in the world are very bad at identifying clashes because, like, you're literally trying to sum up an hour debate into one single sentence. So that's very hard and difficult. You very much fail, and then what, what, what the fuck are you doing? And that's, nobody's doing that anymore. So that was the, the old days. <coughs> now people do not require you. The thing you need to do is answer three questions. Three questions are, why do we mean against opening government? Yeah, three, Serbia, yeah, ha ha ha. <laughs> why do we mean against opening government? Why do we mean against opening opposition? And why do we mean against whatever you are, closing or opening, uh, closing or uh, closing government or closing opposition in this regard. Those are the, those are, this is the structure of the web that needs to happen. And this is how you do it. First of all, why do you win against opening opposition in your CG? Rebuttal. Then you do, the, the, and the, the, the answer to the question doesn't need to be preset before, the, the, before your speech started. You can, uh, you can, your answer to the question be because I just did, 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 did the thing, right? Yeah, that is completely fine, right? You're, you do not have to be winning at that point. You just have to add the rebuttal to be winning after that, right? Um, so you. Yeah. Yeah. So th 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 that's the point. Right? No, no I, I, would, I would just add that it's more effective if you uh, do not flag it and announce it, but rather draw a conclusion from the stuff you already did. Yeah. So the difference is, uh, I'm now going to show you why we win over opening government versus showing you win over opening government and say these are the reasons why we are over opening government. Yeah. So, I mean, so the, the same things can be fine. Yeah. But the, the thing is, like, when you talk about clashes and how they are bad structure, if you structure your web speech in the same way as to like deal with three different themes, then it suffers from the same problem of clashes as well, because you have to uh, you take the content that you already have in the status quo stuff you want to talk about stuff that you've written down, and then you try to compartmentalize it, like put it in different brackets, and you necessarily lose some of the like module, some of the noise, blah blah blah. So if you just do the noise and then flag what you did. Uh, why this is important, why this like wins you over other teams, 
then usually you will have better, like more fluent speech and stuff like this than compared to. Yeah. But one of my so, but if you can be like it can be Schmeckerski, how do you say? It, uh, it can be very very cool, uh, very very cool. If you can sum up in one sentence why you win against the team, so that's Leechin. Uh, does that and does that pretty well, and which is like, why do we win against? Uh, like, I'm going to show you three things uh, why o opening government loses because of uh, the lack of real realistic comparative, opening opposition because of like uh, I don't know missing the comparative, and closing government because of the lack of the extension, and then blah blah, blah and then go into these these three things. That's also fine. I think it's just a matter of style, what you want to do with your weapon in this sort of situation. There is no correct answer here, but the, 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 there is one correct answer. Clashes are bad. Clashes are shit. Don't do them. I struggled so much when they taught me like this, and when they finally taught me, but that's just how we teach people. It's not really to be used. Fuck you. I could have been a whip uh, speaker uh, if I didn't hate the clashes so much previously. So don't do clashes. Uh, yeah, that, that was the whole point <laughs> of this. Uh, Let's start maybe with the uh, workshop. Also, one more thing. I, uh, I don't think it's but ever... This is the workshop. <laughs> <laughs> this is the no, workshop. Like the training. There is, there is no training for bottom half. How do you do it? Okay. <laughs> uh, it is. So, the thing is, I don't think it's ever useful to, as closing opposition, to take points from closing governments. Maybe some of you disagree here, but well, I don't think it's... Then again, then so, from closing opposition, I don't think it's ever, ever useful to take points from closing government. Just do not do that. I mean, so, uh, no, 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 but I, I, it's not ever, you're more... Fuck you, Laura. <laughs> okay, it's, no, but, like, but uh, if, 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 if opening tables is completely irrelevant, then it is. So, the, the fact, if, if opening government is so forth, then it's no use taking the POI from that. But what value... Here's the thing. The so value is they will challenge your the, they will challenge your presumption in that time. So yeah. they will try to rebut, you will rebuild. Yeah, so so here's the here's the point. They are going to do this no matter what. And you have one speech to respond to them all the time. So the only thing that you can get as a bonus is more engagement with them. Yeah. And the thing they get as a bonus is fucking up with your case more with POI and like catching you on the wrong leg. Judges, from what I have judged, do not value this disengagement as much as the harm that it can be done to your case. Mm -hmm. And you don't lose anything because you always come after them. So all the stuff they can say in the POI, they can also say in the speech and you can respond to this. But there, there, is, there is one thing that you're missing. And that's the fact that they can remind you what you missed to respond to. And this is what usually they do. If it's a good POI, they will say, they didn't respond to this thing. Okay, cool, I'm gonna respond to this now, or something like that. So the fact of the matter is that you're coming behind doesn't mean that you really know what's, what's supposed to be engaged with. But, but also, this means that sometimes they will point out stuff that judge is also really thinking. Your response is inefficient because like this is blah, 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 or something like that. So it's not true. But they, can do, they are going to do this in a speech as well. I know they're going to do this in a speech, <laughs> but if opening governments are potatoes, there is, there is literally no reason to take the POI from them. Yeah, the, the reason is that you are not going to get your case harmed by anyway. But you're not, you're, 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 he's a pussy, he's just a friend. <laughs> if you have a winning case, you will win either way. But if you're going to win either way, then it doesn't matter. <laughs> they can find you. They always tell us this is like really bad if we ask a few why, can you give a rebuttal on that or can you bring more analysis to that because it's like helping them so I don't really understand how in this context it's good to ask them like, okay can you bring additional rebuttal to that point. No, but it's, it's very valuable to tell to a judge, especially because POIs are going to be asked at 5. 45. Like, you know, if, you, uh, if you accept or ask POI before that, it's a waste, waste of a POI. But if, you, if, if I, at 5.45, in your opposition to it, come up and say, look, look judge, uh, these are the three things that are left standing even after his speech, he will not have time to respond to all these three things and he will be fucked. So I'm bringing the attention of the judge to some of the things that are not responded to. So, I mean, obviously there is no correct answer because it depends on how the debates play out, but uh, you will not say, please respond to that, but you will say, look, these things are left standing and these things are not engaged with uh, judge, this is the most important women or something like that. So, so whatever. It's going to be really damaging to you. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't respond. But if you didn't respond to these three things and the judge noticed either way, then you're then that's also very damaging to you. Yeah, so but the, the chances of you not noticing 
but knowing how to respond are very strong. <laughs> because if you if you know how to respond, you're probably gonna notice it's important and you're gonna notice this. If you this is a philosophical <laughs> question. <laughs> this, this is a philosophical question, but that's that's like as I said, if you have opening tables that is bad, it's always worth thinking up your offer when you're posting in that regard. Are you, are you only talking about the whip speaker or both? Because I would think that that's gonna be different from the I'd say also it's different. Because I mean, then, the, this this case this case this case and this guy's case literally has the only impact of law of speech has uh, on closing opposition web because like the other thing you you do if your partner fucks up the response you can respond no, again no, towards no. that that would be very valuable. Well, but it works for all, uh, opposition extension as well because you already know what the extension is so you you don't get the benefit of like asking. But you will get responded towards your case and now you will get preemptive response in some manner. Like if if you allow them a feel like that means like if you're a member of government or opposition, it's always wise to get from the closing app just to kind of uh, calculate what would yes. be their strongest point they're holding on to, so yes. that the whip speed speaker okay. has time to respond. So in terms of your, your button to your I agree. I, I mean that what I agree. <laughs> He does Yeah. That, that I mean, as a web speaker, I can assume it, yeah. it would be like if you already got a point before and then you already clarified it and then you just don't want to deal so with this, that or chance. So if you're closing opposition, consider lower what he said. If you're not, then just play how the debate is playing out and take the PR from the strongest team at that point. Yeah, that's not uh, situational. But yeah, it's very situational. But like one of the second thing that is most important, like, well, how much time do we have? Not much. But like one of the things that is also very important is for you as a web to have the idea who won and what's happening. Usually when I'm judging, I literally know top half, I already know who won. Like after top half, nothing should be able to change your opinion because like there is no like closing opposition, rebutted OG, so now OO takes the fit. That, that's uh, not allowed in the debates, right? So you have to adjudicate after the top half. So adjudicating and practicing adjudication actually makes you a better web because it makes you draw conclusions. How would you explain, and this is also very cool, uh, how would you explain if you were not a whip but a, a, a judge, uh, the call on top half or something? So obviously, you're not going to deliver the full thing because it will be five minutes. But like, how would you sum up why does OG lose to OO or something like this? Or why is it, is it vice versa or something like this? This is very useful, first of all, to signal to you what you need to do, what you need to respond to, what is the most important thing, who is the largest threat, but it's also very cool because in that regard you can, uh, how do you say, uh, pinpoint some of these things and it can, how do you say, uh, be better for your essential. If your opening opposition is losing towards your opening government uh, or something like this and you're closing opposition, one of the good ways to frame your extension and to frame in the web, in the web and say like, look, opening government has beaten opening opposition because they haven't provided us these things. Here's how my partner answered these things. So we win against both in this sort of situation. It's very easy for you to draw this synergy, but you need to know what's happening and you need to have some idea who's winning and why are they winning in a certain way. And similar to what, what, does, what has happened after the extension, uh, who's first, who's second, uh, what do I need to prioritize by? Because in that regard, you will spend more or less time uh, on certain cases or something like that. So I numerous times see even advanced people rebutting stuff that is, because that's easy, because that's, that's what people do, rebutting, like I'm doing a whip and I'm doing a rebuttal and I'm not rebutting stuff that is already been taken down, that is irrelevant, my opening has already won against them, and what, what do I add? So adding the same rebuttal or similar, very similar rebuttal towards what your opening team did is doing nothing, literally nothing, because like still uh, they're, they are counting on taking down their argument. If this is not a novel response, I would just be like, who cares? So you're just wasting your time. And I know it's easy to bash on the team that is the worst and that is doing some of the stuff, but you're wasting your time not rebutting and not framing your case in comparison to the team who's better in this scenario uh, and stuff like that. Okay? Okay? Uh, so in terms of POIs, first of all, you want to flag your extension, not completely, but to flag it in a, like, the convoluted way, like an open send, but like to flag it in a, in, in a certain way, to flag your extension towards the technically leader of the opposition, uh, if you're CG. 
uh, you want them to engage with it. First of all, to make it stronger, because like if somebody responds, then you can come up with a response the response or something else. Uh, but then again, in order to secure that the the judges see that there is a how they say there they had the time to respond, they had something like this. So it's very cool for your POI, from deputy leader of the opposition, uh, to deputy leader of the opposition to be uh, like this. Also, uh, sometimes, uh, something. Yeah, the the other side of what I talked about in backend before is that sometimes it's useful as member governments to take a POI for closing opposition. That's if you want to if you want an extension. But this POI has to be around half of your speech, so three to four minutes, not later. Because if it's later, then you don't have time. So, to so your group does not have time to prepare. So it needs to be early. For them. So again, uh, ideally, when you are asking POIs. You do not want to ask them early. And this is why it's very useless and I think there's a collective action problem where everybody's starting to stand up on everything and then I have to stand up. If you're standing up, I don't want them to take your POI and I stand as well. But like uh, a common agreement between both uh, like sides of the house, like opposition, is to actually not stand until we're around five minutes. Why? Because like the later it is in their speech, the more likelihood of it for them not to be able to answer it properly because it's the end of the speech and they're like, ooh, I need to hurry up, I need to do a lot of stuff or something like this. Uh, so the panic kicks in. Also, it's uh, the next speaker uh, doesn't have as much time to think about it. Uh, so there is loads of synergies of asking the POI as late as possible or something like this and not just being like, one minute mark, POI. What are you going to say? That they have their whole extension ahead of them or their whole case ahead of them. You don't know what they're going to ask. So just, just stop. <laughs> just don't do that. Does it make sense? So if we are CG and we have a POI for DLO and we want to flag our extension kind of, does it maybe make sense to ask that earlier? Because then it, if it doesn't let signal to the judge, oh, but look, he, had, he didn't have like from 5.45. Oh, that nuance, that nuance is not, not going to okay. be counted. The, the judges will not care. They will just care if he didn't respond properly. They will not be like, oh, he had two minutes more or something else. They will just care about the opportunity itself or something else. If you're closing off, does it make any sense to give your extension to Prime Minister or Deputy Prime Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. First of all, not to the Prime Minister, never. To the Deputy Prime Minister, yes. And this is where you have to be very careful. First of all, this is the where you do it in 555, literally the last possible second you are given the POI in order to because first of all, uh, in 555, the speaker who is like uh, this Deputy Prime Minister, the next is Deputy Leader of the Opposition, they have so little time, they have one minute uh, or less. To, to write your extension. They're not gonna be, even if they do it, they're not gonna be able to do it with the sophistication that you're gonna do, right? But sometimes it's very crucial for you to uh, have your extension engaged with. Like, and this is how I met Marta, how I met your mother. <laughs> like, uh, no, but, but, but literally, like, uh, the, the, the comparative, the comparative in, in the debate, uh, the debate was selling cities, like giving, uh, uh, giving uh, the right to govern cities to the companies that, to sell, like, basic. Anyway, my case, I think, which I think is very clever. No, but like, uh, I think, I think it's different. Is like to, to not counter prop, but to just make a comparative, not between the failed democracy, which is for in this, uh, and the uh, companies, but with companies and technocrats and something like this. We can support some, something like this. So if we didn't flag this. It would be very dickish move to do it from closing opposition. It might not be taken into account. They might be. Like, it's not fair for them or something like this. So I needed to flag this to, to Deputy Prime Minister, and Marta was going in front of it. So my judgment call there, will she have time enough to, to, to deliver it? And of course she didn't. She said one sentence, and then I could, uh, then I could uh, deliver my full extension. That that. It was a sentence. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, good sentence. So, so yeah, the, the, physically, that person in one minute cannot deliver the extension as well as you will do. If it's something very obvious, then they might. It's a risk, but it's a risk sometimes worth taking, especially if your extension is a bit out there and if, if it's dependent on some factors, because then uh, the judges might be a bit more, how do you say, uh, lenient towards OG and be like, ah, they didn't have that much time, this is a bit crazy, this is a bit unpredictable, or something like that. So it's sometimes useful, usually not. And sometimes there is also one more trick, trick that I like. That I love that. But like, I, I didn't pull it off. But like, I will do it. I will do it uh, at least once before the end of my career. And this is from closing government towards opening uh, opening opposition. 
for the leader of the opposition, flag the wrong extension. Just say something, because that's beautiful, something irrelevant. Why? You fuck two people. First of all, this person is writing the response and he's wasting their time. DLO is trying to write the response that if his partner fucks up. DPM wants to steal that from you, but that's irrelevant or something like this. And then you, uh, then in DLO, uh, then in DLO just deliver, okay, so this is our true extension and then you give it. And that's, that, I think that's so, that's so cool, uh, that's so slick. Uh, I've seen it done, I've seen it done a couple of times. Uh, I've seen that a couple of times, but like it's usually, it's usually, it, you can do it pretty well in e economics debates because you can make a lot of things sound smart that are actually irrelevant. And this is what uh, this is the uh, this is the IMF debate in CEDO. Uh, the, the, the IMF should not require uh, austerity or whatever. And then uh, the CG flag, I don't know what they flag is the first extension, something. How is this going to impact monetary? Uh, currency exchange market or something like this, but they made it sound very smart and everybody was like, how, how does it <laughs> there, was a, there was a DPM, DPM wasted like one minute and a half about it and then the member of government just explained why this is irrelevant and then that's bizarre. So this can be a very fun thing to do. I think that can be, that can be a, <coughs> that's actually a good story. On that point, it can be done by the opening halves as well, like if you're the deputy leader of opposition, yeah. you go out and you say one sentence or two yeah. sentences regarding something that Based. sounds smart and then you bait the both closing teams to do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that can be that. I, I like this mind games, actually. This makes the game more fun. Yeah. Because like, uh, ultimately in the end, debates must be viewed as kind of like a game sporty kind of thing, right? It's so, not a sport. It's not a truth seeking exercise by no matter. You have seven minutes to deliver the thing. Uh, you have people who are way better than you. You don't do as much research as people who are better than you uh, in terms of academia. In any field that we are debating, we're less smart than people who are experts in this area. So we're surface levels intellectual bickering, but it's very fun. So it's more, it, 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 it shouldn't be viewed through the prism of you should know and you should be smart about like a lot of these topics, but about how this game is played, what are the rules and how is this one? And the path of learning the actual rules is the path of like, like what are we doing now or something like that. Just uh, dissecting some of the stuff in the debate and breaking it down into how does this work is actually something that is, that is uh, uh, how much time? So we should stop at the two, right? Yeah. Should happen. Should happen. Should happen. Okay. I, I have one more question. Before yeah. Sure. I would like just to, to understand your, your view of, of extensions from another point perspective, from the judges' perspective. Okay. Because like I think extensions, as hard as they are for the speakers to deliver, I think they are as hard for judges to understand and properly sure. evaluate them because like we see the most controversies between judges happen on extensions, whether that was an actual extension, whether they just repeated the same words, or whether it was just an EPL extension, or whether that yeah. was a backstep or it wasn't. So how do you make sure SCA, as part of the CA team, how do you make sure to standardize how judges kind of uh, absorb these kind of extensions or these kind of controversies? You, you can do the CA perspective. Uh, I think that uh, from the perspective of, of teams, uh, this is one of the stuff that like, you kind of, it's not nice, but you have to do it, you should do it, you should force yourself to do it. Such as like maybe talking to a lot of people and then getting judges on your side. The same goes with what's your chair like. So if you, if you have an Australian judging you, be sure there will be more strict on extension than the status quo. And you're going to have to come up with a stronger extension than, for example, if uh, someone from Balkans is judging you who are... The, like, we are lighter than extensions. Very light to extensions. So, so there is no standard. That's the problem. You're trying to push people into uh, the, the issue is the judging itself is very hard to quantify. There is a good judge. There is a bad judge. The issue is similar to debating itself. It's very hard to teach if you don't get it. If you don't get it, it's very hard. And in, in the best case scenario, you will have all of the people who get it and it will be fine. The problem is there is not enough judges in the world to judge the world championship, like 100 judges who will all get it. So this is why there are like good or bad judges or something like this. So the way we're trying to not standardize it is basically giving more courses on judging and stuff like that. This was like one of the, one of the, one of the things that we want to do as, as, as Athens and stuff like that. But like also being more clear in instruction manuals of uh, the, the issue is the debate is so complex in terms of what happens inside of the debate 
is so different from one case to another that there is no standard thing. You can see that by people talking outside uh, outside uh, of the room and being like, oh, you run this and you got first and I got fourth. Oh, robbery. But then if you really look at it, you didn't deliver it actually the same. You didn't analyze it. Just the fact that you run the same argument doesn't mean that you win automatically with the same argument. It means that there are other factors in play. What was the other arguments? Uh, how did you frame it? What was the rebuttal or something like So this is very problematic. This is how people view uh, as debaters. Like they're very frustrated. Ooh, I had a uh, same case and they won. There's different things that happen in the room that is completely, uh, variables are so high that it's impossible to do. But as a speaker, this is why the start of my lecture wasn't how to get an extension, because I do think that's obvious and do, do people do, is how to frame your extension. This is arguably way more important, especially if it's a bad judge. So when, when people ask me usually, uh, Ooh, uh, it's a bad judge, what do I do or something like this. The most important thing for the bad judge is actually to have complete clarity. Judges, especially bad judges, usually are a bit, at least bit self-aware about their ability or inability. And what the judges do is, this is a stressful moment, you're delivering a feedback. Some people are, mm, like the like surgeon is doing now, they're, they're looking at you funny. Uh, you, will get, you will get evaluated on that, so you, you, you also don't want them to seem stupid. So you're trying to get the, uh, the how do you say, the, the easiest possible explanation that you can give to teams or something like this. This is why I usually tell to people when they're top half not to sleep during your like, oh, oh, or something like this, because that's, that's also one of the things. Because I see the passionate team, and if I see the team that sleeps or something like this, usually judges think of, oh, but these people have already given up. It, they will be fine with me giving them a fourth rather than giving them a first or something like this. So if you're constantly standing up or something like this, this is signaling to a judge, oh, you, oh, you will have trouble to. Judging is also a so social thing. It's very uncomfortable if somebody's challenging your decision and challenging something. So as I said, you're going to go to the path of least resistance, which is usually going to be, what can I explain easiest? The easiest thing that you can explain is that somebody didn't have an extension. Because like you can spin it in a way and that you didn't value it in a certain way. This is why it's usually popular and it's very hard in the Yona and stuff like that. Oh, you didn't have an extension, you didn't have an extension or something like that. It's very difficult because the extension usually needs to be like, okay, what was it? What did opening team said? If you to be a good judge. What did the opening team say? What are the new sentences here? How did I compare this? This is very complex. Whilst I can just say, oh, this wasn't very novel, this is never, and then they go on, then very easy. So what you want to do in a, in a bad judge situation and stuff like that is be very clear how do you compare and what is your extension. So sacrifice the analysis in order to have this, so as I said, some, you cannot deliver 100% speech always, you have to sacrifice something. So in this scenario, it's better to sacrifice the analysis and the part of the extension uh, whilst proving and flagging why is this the most important thing, why is this different, here's why we're different or something like this. Because usually the judges and the bad judges are going to use the same thing that you said as the, as the warrant. But also, you're making them fucked. Why? Because if they want to, if they want to explain, they cannot, after that, explain it easy, oh, you just didn't have extension, right? They have to rebut, kind of, or they have to justify why your framing wasn't correct. So it's, again, putting them in the position that they actually have to consider that, right? So both sides of human psychology, of bad judging and stuff like that, is tempered by you being so clear or something like that, and not being lazy and being like, look, this is why, why our extension, this is what happened in opening cap, uh, this is how we fit in, or all of the things that we talked about at the beginning of the lecture that you forgot already. Shame on you, no. <laughs> but, you, but you will have on the on the on the on the camera, so you will see. Uh, anyway, uh, I hope this was useful to work you. Yeah, I hope you learned a lot, and thank you. And here, we talk to you later. Yeah.